Oh, are you ready? Yeah. It's recording already? Yeah, it's been oh. recording. Okay. Hi everyone, I'm Hiccups the Clown. The story behind the name Hiccups. It came from a book that I used to read to the kids at the hospital and it was about a moose that had the hiccups throughout the whole story. And every time he thought the hiccups were gone, he would hiccup again and his friend, a bear, uh, tried different methods to uh, take the hiccups out, out of him and nothing worked. Uh, at the end, what worked is uh, he got scared by by saving his own friend from the river, and that's how he got rid of the hiccups. And every time I <laughs> hiccup, all the kids laugh. So I, I got the name Hiccups. It's hiccups. The My look has changed. My look used to I used to have a red nose. I used to wear a wig, but because I'm a Dodger fan, I kind of. And, uh, the blue inf has influenced my look. As you can tell, I don't wear a wig no more. I'm more approachable with the cap, and it has uh, changed me because I'm not embarrassed to go anywhere to do my laundry, go buy groceries, uh, go to nightclubs, <laughs> and go eat as a clown because that, that's who I who I became. I don't see it as a costume. I, I wear this way after Halloween, and, and people call it a costume. Some people just call me hiccups. Uh, so my look uh, has, has been it, it's progressed to look more uh, more natural uh, I've, I've ridden the bus like this I've flown on airplanes like this I've got to concerts like this so it, it's uh, it's proven to be a, a, a more uh, mellow type of clown and I'm proud of it Dodger, Dodger gear it came as a surprise to myself. I went to Dodger Stadium after I did a birthday party on a Sunday and I didn't change. I just kind of uh, took my wig off, put on the, the cap, kept my face and you know, uh, and I went to Dodger Stadium like that. And I was, I was able to pull it off and people people asked me why I was dressed as a clown. I say because I, I am a clown and I just came from a birthday party. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> when I was growing up, I wanted to be a teacher and I also wanted to learn how to paint. Those things came in handy later on in my life. I, I did become a teacher, physical teacher, and I, I, knew, I know how to paint. Painting has uh, turned into face painting, has turned into, uh, into making my own art, uh, making my original own art. But as a kid, uh, I, I do remember wanting to help, help kids learn, help kids uh, teach, teach them right from wrong. That's what I wanted to be when I was a kid. And I became a clown. Oh, if I, was, <laughs> if I was able to change something from my past, what would I change? I think I would have uh, pushed myself harder to start school right after high school. I would have really liked to have, have more uh, support. Uh, I think it's important. Like, kids to continue school right after high school. After high school does not mean it's over, you're done. It means keep on moving. So now that I'm older, I, I think that I would have changed that. Just to uh, pursue something, but I, I don't regret anything that I am today. I don't regret nothing that I've done because without those mishaps, I wouldn't be who I am right now. But uh, as far as changing, that, that that's it. That, that's the only thing I would change. And that's the only thing I would advise people to remember. Keep on going to school. You, you know, dreams are not that far to reach. You just gotta really push yourself. That's it. Did I expect my life to be how it is now? No. Nobody is born a clown. <laughs> Nobody in your classroom says, I want to be a clown when I grow up. So no, I did not expect this. Uh, not expect this. I did not go to school to become a clown, and I did not expect to have a lot of followers that, that like and do the same things that I do, like feeding the homeless and supporting other people that need uh, help. Uh, no, I didn't. I didn't expect this. So it was a good surprise for me to take a moment. You know? Growing up, was I considered a class clown? No, I was more of a prankster, can you believe that? 
I like putting cups of water on top of the door so my sister could open it and fall on her. That kind of stuff. I was more of a prankster. I would uh, on Halloween. I, <laughs> on Halloween, I would, I would, I would, I would try to put earthworms on my Halloween makeup, <laughs> and, and they would live like for three minutes and then they would die. <laughs> so that's the kind of stuff I would do. I was more of a prankster, not a clown. I did silly things just with the uh, with natural things. I, you know, I didn't. And by an axe and walk around like that, like these scary clowns. More of a prankster, uh, not a clown. I, I don't know a lot of jokes. <laughs> <laughs> How did the pizza project start? <laughs> it was September 2012. Uh, I bought 20 hot dogs for a dollar because they were a dollar that Sunday. And I went to Skid Row to give out hot dogs. Just me, just as a clown, after the game, 20 hot dogs. I drove to Skid Row, find a little, found a little crowd and I distribute 20 hot dogs. More people went went by towards my car and when I said I had no more food, they just said they just wanted to shake my hand and say hi. Then I came back uh, maybe two weeks later with 50 hot dogs and the season was over. It was October going into November and I had always kept in mind that people in Skid Row were hungry. So I came up with with the idea of perhaps maybe serving homeless people somehow. Oh, and I write things down. Uh, I forget a lot of things, so I write things down. And I started uh, thinking, what, yeah, what can I what can I give? I do, I have hiccups now. <laughs> I, uh, so I decided uh, to write things down, see what worked for me, what the rules were, where I was gonna distribute food, and I started with feeding 400 people, just pizza and water. That's it, just pizza and water uh, with 20 volunteers. And it went well, and I kept doing it, mainly because I told people, I promise you I'll be back next month. And that's how that started. What does the pizza project mean to you? I'm gonna put it very simple. It means to me that that is why I was born. Do you ever have that feeling that you're doing exactly what you were supposed to do in your given life? That, that's, that's how it feels to me right now. I created something out of nothing. And this creation has been evolving with people that think like me, people that have big hearts like me, and people that I can trust and see way beyond just a, a helpless human. They're, they're there with heart. So this this to me means everything I stand for. My part in humanity. That's what it means. And what do you think it means for other people? I I I'm, I don't have the answer to that, but from what I see, I think it means purpose for other people. I think it brings it brings out the goodness in other people and from what I see because people return to skip what I help, it means that their lives are, are impacted as well. Not only mine, communities, but theirs. Uh, it reminds them, and I say this because I, I've been approached to how, how they feel about it. It reminds them that our problems are not as bad as someone that doesn't have a home or a place to live. Uh, and that our, our problems are just little, they're, they're, little, they're little compared to someone that doesn't have anything. I think it means a lot to them in that aspect that when you help someone that's homeless, it reminds you that you're actually okay. We all struggle, but you're okay. Who is my hero and why? I don't have just one hero. But if I had to say who is my hero, it, have, it has to be my grandma because she's... She's old and, and she still argues with me. Uh, and she, she, you know, she has a mindset on her of her own, and she's 102, so she's my hero. But I have a lot of heroes. I have heroes that are police officers. I have heroes that are kids that fight cancer. I have heroes that are single moms. I have heroes that are single dads. I have heroes that are. Uh, that are disabled. I have heroes that are that are inspiring. So I have a lot of heroes. But if I had to name one, I would have to say it's my grandmother because she's a badass. 
what do the people, the volunteers that come out and help me with the pizza project mean to me? One word, family. I, I say if you gather people to party with you, then they're just your friends to party. If you gather people to go to the beach or have a picnic, then they're just your friends to, to have fun. But if you gather people to help other people, they become your friends, your family, and your mentors. Because you learn from them, they learn from you. So every person that volunteers, whether they come, whether they support, whether they, they send their best wishes, whether they bring a toothbrush or a million toothbrushes, no matter who, what, or what they bring, the thought of them being there is priceless for me. So, volunteers, my heart goes out to you for for being a volunteer. It's the kind of work, uh, kind of work that is less recognizable, but it's okay because you always carry it in your heart. Being a volunteer moves mountains. Do I have a favorite part of being hiccups? Yes and no. <laughs> the yes part is that uh, if people do take the time to ask me why I'm just like a clown, they're either gonna Google me, find out about me, and then respect me. No part is that sometimes people are afraid of clowns and don't necessarily uh, take it the right way. Uh, I will never scare anybody, I will never, uh, agree to scare anybody just to scare somebody because there is a clown phobia and I respect that clown phobia just like I'm afraid of heights I don't want anybody ever to <laughs> take me up top of a rooftop and scare me so uh, that's that's the bad part that there is a clown phobia but the good part is that I'm not just a costume um, I'm actually a, a person uh, whether with the makeup or not uh, my goals are still the same would you consider yourself famous? Why or why not? Famous? No. Uh, known with with the people that follow me? Yes. Uh, the difference between famous is that you make money being famous. Somebody pays you to be famous. Uh, I'm not famous. I do things for others, so my audience is also part of the movement of feeding homeless people and serving children with cancer. So no, I don't consider myself famous. And if I'm known for those two things, then I'm happy. My final thoughts are the same ones I say every month. Keep on sharing, keep on loving, keep on being good to one another. It doesn't cost anything to do that. You can be rich, poor, if you have a rich heart, uh, you'll go further than what you thought you would, whatever reach. You know, nobody told me to do this, nobody tells me to do this. It's a, it's a way, it's a form of, of me showing appreciation for everything that I have, uh, which is uh, a lot, considering that we are in categories. When I say a lot is that everything we have, that camera you're using, those glasses you're wearing, those nice shoes, uh, all of that stuff is luxury because in reality, there's people that don't have that people that live under the stars, under the rain, the cold, the heat. So just always remember that, always remember that. Uh, I hope that the viewer, they either see me on the street or at Dodger Stadium or anywhere, they know exactly who I am. Uh, you know, they, they would know that I'm not a creepy clown outside your school, but I'm actually a clown that does things for humanity. 